Hi, my name is Brianna Orris, and I am going to be talking about pneumonia in older adults over the age of 65. Um, pneumonia in older adults is very common um, because they, these adults are um, predisposed to this disease um, just from the age-related effects on their body and um, some of the other comorbidities that they may have. Um, pneumonia is an inflammatory response in the respiratory system that is caused by infectious agents including viruses, bacteria, and fungi or can be from an injury or event like smoking or aspiration. The CDC estimates that 1.1 million hospitalizations and 50,000 deaths occur annually to, due to pneumonia um, just in the United States and that is including all age groups. Um, the main cause of pneumonia is Streptococcus pneumoniae, and this bacteria accounts for about 75% of all pneumonia cases. Um, there are many predisposing factors that increase the risk of pneumonia in older adults. Um, some of these factors include a decrease in nasal clearance, age-related effects on the respiratory system, and a decline in overall immune response. Um, this Um, also, a poor functional status, um, heart disease, lung disease, weight loss, and smoking are also some factors that um, predispose older adults and it makes it harder for them to um, fight the disease. Um, patients who are bedridden or immobile um, are at higher risk of pneumonia just from the fact that they aren't moving their, um, their lungs and expanding them as much as they should and um, they cannot cough up the secretions. Um, swallowing disorders, aspiration, poor quality of life, malnutrition, a decrease in protein and albumin, and prior antibiotic therapy also puts older adults at risk. Um, over 900,000 cases each year in older adults occur in the United States, and increased mortality rates and readmissions occur often in this age group. Okay, so some of the pathological changes that occur um, with the cardiovascular system includes a decreased cardiac output, decreased inotropic response in the heart muscles, increased blood pressure, um, thickening of the arterial walls, um, which can lead to arterial sclerosis, and the increase in lipids found in the vessels, which can lead to high cholesterol, which ultimately leads to coronary artery disease. Um, in the respiratory system, there is a decrease in vital capacity, which actually starts at the age of 20, and they decrease in decrements of 26 milliliters in men a year, or 22 milliliters a year in women. So this is a significant decrease, you know, starting at age 20, and it goes down every year by that. Also, a decrease in arterial oxygen, uh, pressure, elastic recoil of the lungs, a mismatch of ventilation and perfusion, and an increased chance of airway collapse and closure due to these changes can occur in the respiratory system. In the uh, genio -urinary, urinary system, there is a decrease in the weight of the kidney volume, weight and volume of the kidneys, um, which can lead to an, a decrease in glomular, um, which can lead to a decrease in creatinine clearance. Um, there's also urinary incontinence that can happen prostate enlargement in male patients and a dehydration and electrolyte imbalances are also very common in this age group. Um, dehydration in older adults can also can lead to other risks including decubitus, ulcers, decreased muscle strength, constipation, renal failure, respiratory infections, medication toxicity, falls, acute, confu acute inf confusion, and decrease in muscle strength. Um, and with the reproduction reproductive system. Um, women go through menopause starting at about the age of 40, 40 or 50, and then men can dis, um, have erectile dysfunction, which can also be from medications that they are taking, like hypertensive medications, um, and this is an unwanted side effect, but if they have to take their medicine, um, this is just something that they're stuck to deal with. In the endocrine system, um, progressive deterioration in the number of and function of insulin-producing beta cells, um, even mild hyperglycemia in older adults can lead to osmotic diuresis due to the changes in their renal function, which can ultimately lead to dehydration. Um, so it's very important to encourage um, 
older adults to, you know, drink a lot of water and fluids throughout the day. Um, and with the gastrointestinal system, um, the major changes here is the esophagus changes um, because this can lead to aspiration. Um, the changes with the esophagus include decrease in motility, a decrease in parasitic peristaltic response, an increase in non-peristaltic response, a decrease in relation of the sphincter, and a delay in transit time. Um, it is said that um, older adults have a high risk of pneumonia from the risk of um, aspiration pneumonia, or aspiration. Um, there is a link between pneumonia and aspiration that was found in a study of about 274,000 elderly patients, and 23% of those had oropharyngeal dysphagia and actually aspirated on secretions, food, or other substances which could have caused to the development of pneumonia. Uh, mus musculoskeletal changes with aging include a decline in lean body mass from atrophy and loss of muscle cells. This can lead to a decrease in strength and ability to perform essential activities of living. Um, degenerative joint disease occurs in about 85% of older adults um, over the age of 70 and is a major cause of disability. Pain could be so severe that these patients don't want to get out of bed and don't want to ambulate. Um, with the neurological system, um, Memory changes can happen, and this is just like poor recall of everyday activities, names and recognition, and, mispla and misplacement of items. Um, Alzheimer's and dementia is not a normal change in older adults. Um, about 10% of older adults can suffer from personality changes, and of course, uh, vision, hearing, smell, taste, um, these all decrease over time. Um, with the immune system um, there when dealing with the with the elderly and pneumonia effects of aging play an important factor into an increased cases seen in patients over 65 years of age because of the decline in the immune response to the disease um, there is proven lower local and systemic inflammatory responses um, a decrease in host defense and immunity a decline in T and B cell function and a decrease in function of natural killer cells neutrophils and macrophages these all play a role in our body's response to illnesses um, and especially in pneumonia um, not only do effects of immun immunity increase that for this age group to a higher incident of pneumonia, but also cardiac function predisposes to elderly um, as a high risk for pneumonia. Um, so that it's very important to, you know, promote the pneumonia vaccination every five years for this age group. Uh, modifiable risk factors. Um, of pneumonia include limiting or cessation of tobacco use. Um, this can cause an increased complication with respiratory function and it also increases your risk of developing pneumonia. Um, limiting alcohol use, excess alcohol use um, decreases your immune response so it can also lead to um, older patients with their immune system already you know compromised adding alcohol and tobacco use can actually increase um, the risk of getting pneumonia more. Um, eliminate exposure toxins, um, use protect protective devices if you should be exposed to anything like chemicals, gas, um, any just, you know, toxins that can um, impact your respiratory function. Eating habits, um, as we all know, older adults have a decrease in appetite um, and it can be hard for them to want to eat and want to, you know, fill their bodies with nutritious foods. Um, so adding protein to the diet, including supplemental drinks um, like Boost or Insure can help older adults um, fight off infections and diseases. Um, Non-modifiable non risk factors include their comorbidities. Um, the important thing here is management of disease and prevention, preventative care. Um, these can all prevent pneumonia and actually, you know, increase their quality of life. Um, patients with extensive medical history, you know, have a, a higher risk anyway of getting pneumonia. And with their age and their, you know, decrease in the immune system, it kind of all ties together and they're more likely to get it. 
um, annual physicals, um, annual influenza vac vaccination, and a pneumonia vaccine every five years are important to promote to patients over the age of 65. Um, some living environments, like residents of long-term care facilities, um, they're exposed to more communicable diseases um, just due to the population that they are living with. So many, you know, residents have extensive health histories as well, and you're putting them in an environment where pneumonia could be seen, so this increases their risk. Um, and then prior exposure to toxins, secondhand smoke, you can't really go back in time and take that away. So just, you know, just remember not to be around those things. Um, the rehab services for primary prevention, um, this would be the prevention of um, pneumonia. So just doing all the things to prevent, like getting the pneumonia vaccine, um, all that stuff. Secondary would be your treatment of pneumonia and tertiary would be your pneumonia vaccine every five years. Um, nursing care interventions, uh, deterioration in oral health status um, leads to an increased risk of pneumonia and increased length of hospital stay and cost and it can impact the patient's well-being and quality of life. Um, because there are physiological and mechanical pathways between the oral cavity and lung tissue, disruption of oral health places patients at risk for pneumonia. Um, bacteria that is actually found in dental plaques and in the mouth have been um, found to be a causative agent of pneumonia. Assessment of respiratory rate, effort, um, use of accessory muscles, breath sounds, and skin color are the basic nursing assessments for pneumonia and should be assessed anyways with your patient. Um, this will tell you if your patient is improving or deteriorating um, just by assessing the situation. Um, recording an accurate intake and output is very important because you want to make sure that your patient is adequately hydrated. Um, encourage your patients to drink at least three liters a day. Of course, if they're getting IV and you know IV fluids, you don't want to overload them, but you know just kind of balance between what you're doing. Um, collection of a sputum specimen may be necessary, and it, this should be collected as soon as they're admitted, or you know as soon as they can cough something up. Um, this will help in dosing antibiotics to determine the sensitivity of the organism causing the pneumonia. Um, in recording the sputum characteristics, characteristics and noting any changes is very important as well. Um, encouraging the use of in incentive spirometer will help to cough up secretions and keep your airway open. Um, for the treatment plan, um, supplemental oxygen um, is used often to meet the ma demands on the body. Um, antibiotics are given for the most likely caused organism until the sputum culture comes back um, with the sensitivity. Um, and also, um, some of the IV antibiotics um, that are you know commonly used are Levaquin, Azithromycin, Rocephin, um, these are all used within the hospital setting as an IV for the high-risk patients. Um, antipyretics for fever greater than 101 degrees Fahrenheit, um, Tylenol or ibuprofen, those are used just for patient comfort. Also, they may be having like body aches and headaches too, so you always want to make them comfortable. Um, Bracodilators um, are used to keep the airway open and to enhance airflow. Um, albuterol via nebulizer or meter dose inhaler are the most commonly used ones in the hospital. Um, you also want to increase their fluid intake to help loosen secretions and prevent dehydration. So they may be on IV, um, you know, fluids to help them, you know, hydrated. But you also want to encourage, um, you know, oral intake. You also want to instruct how to use the incentive spirometer, deep breathe, and effective coughing. This will all help the patient to bring up the secretions and, um, you know, just breathe better. The use of technology, um, chest x-rays are often done at admission and um, sometimes they're done every day, it just depends on the doctor, um, but shadows in the chest x-ray which can indicate infiltration may be um, in the low bar or segmental patterns or more scattered, it just depends on where the pneumonia infection is. Um, a culture and sensitivity of the sputum is used to identify the infective agent um, and this is used to um, prescribe the correct antibiotic. Um, continue pulse oximetry reading. Um, this can actually be done on any floor um, if your hospital has the bedside pulse oximetry. Um, 
and it's often used with these patients just to make sure they're not desatting, especially when they're sleeping. I mean, some people have apnea anyway, um, so you just want to make sure their oxygen levels are good. Um, ABGs are sh um, used in the more critical patients, um, and this can show low oxygen and elevated uh, carbon dioxide levels. Um, and some patients that come in with pneumonia end up being on a ventilator, and um, so it's just important to know where your ABGs stand. Also, lab work is also done, and it's usually done every day. Um, elevated white blood cell count or leukocytosis um, is a sign of infection, so you just want to make sure their um, white blood cell count isn't going too high because you don't want them to become septic. Um, this is a care a concept map of pneumonia for the age of over 65, um, and this can be used when you're caring for your patient. Also, you can give this to them as like a little reminder of the non-modifiable and modifiable risk factors, um, just so they can help to um, prevent pneumonia. And these are my references, and thank you so much for listening.